Are you wrong? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Safety first. <laughs> third, right? Maybe third? Yeah. <laughs> a little over a week ago, my sponsor, GT, flew me out to Whistler for Crankworks. Crankworks is one of the largest events, competitions in the world. I wasn't competing, but in attendance, there were some truly amazing riders who I got a chance to ride with and bring you guys along for the journey. Before I went out, I asked my Instagram audience, Sir, I want to know what you guys think what the hardest or scariest features on a mountain are. And I want to try to make it a point to hit as many of those as possible. Throughout these next few videos, that's exactly what we're doing. But unfortunately, on the first day, a lot of my footage got corrupted. So we're left with just one video. And it's my second lap of the day. It's out Dirt Merchant. It's with some pretty heavy hit hitters. So that's what we're going to jump into right now. Actually, I've been told I don't pronounce your last name right. Far away, how do you say it? Circle. Yes, yeah, bro. <laughs> Just keep saying it the way you say it. <laughs> you! Megan, I'll follow you. For the uninitiated, Dirt Merchant is like A-Line, but scaled up quite a bit. It's got some of the more intimidating jumps on the whole mountain. This was only my second run of the week. Anytime you go to Whistler, it always takes me a little while to get acclimated. So, in this run, I'm running a little bit stiff. But I'm also a little bit nervous because these guys are riding a lot faster than most of the people I usually ride with. So for a warm up, this was a little bit much. Oh, this trail is so good. Uh, Brendan got that. Phew. I think the hip's coming up here. That hip is sick. I was way stiff going off that. That thing looks like a wall the first time you hit it. That's my first time on it. That's sick. Is it? Yeah. Those fridge guys going in there blind without falling something. What's that like? Oh, no. Coming up to the hip. That's like a proper quarter pipe hip. It's awesome. There, you're like, there's not a chance. You know, I think you were dying on it. Dilly, the dilly cam. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, that's not going anywhere. We're like gorilla tape. Okay, we're back on. Back on. We're on. We're on. Yeah. Low A line. If you're wondering how to hit breaking bumps, don't jump over them. That is a proper one foot table. That's what we call proper whistler hello. That gap right there. Oh no. I tire tapped the tree uh, coming into the lower part of A-line. And he like got banged back so quickly. As I mentioned, sadly, that was the only footage I got from that day because the rest of the footage got corrupted. The next day I met up with my good buddy and now fellow YouTuber, Eric Porter, and of course we try to get ourselves into some trouble. This is the gondola left line, which is usually pretty short, and as you can see, it's zigzagging quite a bit. So even that's pretty long. Got Eric Porter joining us today, and 
we've got a little secret life hack. We're gonna go over to Creekside where there's no lift line and take that lift. We got pedal, but we can do it. Let's find the worker. <laughs> Pedal. Absolutely. It's funny, I didn't know where this would dump us out. Oh, absolutely. I want to talk about it. The manager, while short, is one of the steepest rock rolls at Whistler that is also a pro line. And demonstrating how to ride it is the manager himself. This is Tom. He's one of the co owners of Gravity Logic. That is rad. Oh. Yeah, buddy. They said, oh, we're gonna have to name this after you. I says, oh, nothing gets named after me. And I said, yes. oh. I was a manager at the time. So they said, oh, then we'll just call the manager. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is chunky. <laughs> What's that? Do I know it? Yeah. Not very well. Ew. Oh yeah, you can just let the brakes run on this one. No, I have like jump PTSD <laughs> of landing flat from <laughs> doing it sometimes on like other parks and other places like that. No, I think they have the speeds pretty dialed here though, which is sick. Another way to beat the lines, do, just do laps of Garbo. How do I always manage to like misplace my car? The next feature is on our list were Filthy Ape and Gold Scully. <laughs> we just needed to figure out how to get there. Like I remember there's something in there that gives everybody flats. Uh, no yeah, way. Oh. That sucks. Filthy ape. What's your name by the way? Rory. Rory. And so obviously you're a guide. Uh, what in your personal opinion is the scariest or sketchiest feature at Whistler? I'd say this is one of them. Like mentally you're way up here and you've got a super early point of commitment once you're on this rock that like you've committed. So overcoming that mental block is pretty big for most people. It's hard to see where the actual line is because it's kind of a general line and even walking up to it gets a little scary for a lot of people. What do you think the key to this is? I think creep in slow and uh, <laughs> I don't want to huck the flat there. It just... All right. All right. Yeah, it's not bad. Just a big compression at the bottom. Yep. Yeah, that's a fun one. Safety first. <laughs> I think it's third, right? Safety first. Yeah. <laughs> If you haven't already, be sure to go over and check out Eric Porter's channel and also be sure to hit that subscribe button while you're there.
All right, I want to look at that feature real quickly. Um, I think the gnarliest on a trail feature in the whole mountain is on Goat's Gully. If you ride the rock roll to the left of the bridge, it's pretty insane. That one is one that every time I come up to it, I'm just like, well, are we going to do it this lap? I think I could do it. I just don't think I feel like doing it. <laughs> Oh, full commit. I didn't think you were gonna do it. <laughs> Dropping in. All right, so nice and smooth. Just chunky turn. Easy on the brakes. Now we have a monster truck section. <laughs> Woohoo! Now we have a monster truck section. Woohoo! Oh! My front wheel almost got taken out. So on all of that stuff, you can't touch your brakes when there's a little bit of water on it. Uh, so a lot of people, your brain wants you to just grab the brakes on a lot of this stuff, and that's how you get in trouble. So. You gotta resist the urge to touch your brakes until you know you have good grip. Oh, this was what I was thinking of. Looking for a so cool. Ah, they're coming in. <laughs> Whoa. Woo. But a chunky little root section to the first little steep pitch. Have to brake hard if you want to make this turn. Can you gap that? You do? We'll find out. The triple hump. I wonder if this is what he was talking about. As you can see, the ending section of uh, this triple rock hump is uh, pretty bony. But like, the line that you're gonna be coming off of if you do the triple rock hump is through those trees. There's a, little, there's a long rock that you're coming down on. It's really chunky and don't have a whole lot of grip on this. Sounds cool. As we made our way to D1, we found a few more extra credit lines, such as this deep rock roll. Easy way. Why do we want the easy way? Steep rock rolls seem to be a theme at Whistler. Smoother than you think. They kind of remind me of dropping into a quarter pipe. <laughs> that was, no, that was good. <laughs> Every one of these lines, it's like uh, fun and exciting and like such a good feeling of accomplishment after you do it. Like, I think that's the big thing when people get themselves into trouble is they'll come up to Whistler, they'll come up here and they want to do the NAR and they drop in without the confidence. I think uh, the term I'd use is you have to attack the trail. You can't be in defense mode. Yeah, you can't be along for the ride. Oh, what is this? Huh. Uh. <laughs> oh yeah. One of the hard things about making this video is there are so many hard and scary features at Whistler and scary can be different to each person. And also, on our way to find more hard and scary features, we kept finding others that we wanted to stop and film. This one doesn't freak me out so much for some reason. Yeah, usually I hate skinnies. Is it right there? Might be down there. How do you feel on this stuff? I feel like I rolled into it last year and thought to myself, I need to put time into this. I remember being tight and blind. Do you know it? I've done it before. i confident enough to hit it blind. So the tricky thing about D1 is all the features come up really quickly. It's almost like more of a dirt jump and less of a mountain bike trail. Coming from dirt jumping and that sort of thing, I like the fact that you have, like it's all the right speed, 
one thing links up to the next. Yep. If it ain't good, the next one's good. Exactly. If you case one, you know to bail out. Yeah. Um, yeah, Unfortunately, Eric somehow got a puncture, so that was the end of his ride. But we're right above the lift, so I can download. Good to go. I'll catch you later, man. Yeah, have fun. Let's see if we can get this from here. I love that feature. On my way down, I ran to Tanner and his brother. They agreed to show me what they thought were the scariest features on the mountain and tell me why they thought these features were scary. Why is this uh, hip scary? I mean, it's just because you're coming in with a lot of speed into a super steep lip. It's hard to see the, where you're gonna land, especially if you haven't hit it before. One of the things I see a lot of people doing is, instead of coming straight this way, people are really arcing. They're just sending it to flat. On this feature, the straighter you go off the lip, the higher up on the landing you'll land, and the smoother it'll be. That's so What's up, dude? Can you be looking at the trail? Oh, nice knack knack. <laughs> the step up's just a little sketchy because you have to come off pretty fast, kind of like a mental block. People see a big jump and they kind of want to brake check when you actually need to be carrying a lot of speed. That right there is good perspective because you standing next to it just shows how big the landing is. So this shop's actually pretty big, but there's nothing about it that, you know, it's got a good case plate. You can send it really deep. So as far as drops go, this one's safer than a lot of small drops I've seen. That's proper. Well, unfortunately I got a flat. Okay, question. Should I hit Dirt Merchant with a flat tire? Well, you got flat. We're going anyway. All right, here we go. Oh. <sighs> 